Oh, God. What is it with you things always getting in here? Really not that nice of a place. <laughs> oh, no, I am not going in there. Too much nightmare fuel. <laughs> All right, that's it. Hello? Pokemon Control? I have an issue at my apartment. Well, you see, over the past few months, wild Pokemon have just been running rampant all over the place, and I just can't seem to get rid of them. What? No, of course I haven't tried repels. Well, Silphco has been kind of going downhill, so I'm not surprised it didn't work. It's kind of all about as a... What kind of incidents? Well, let's see. The first real one was these unknown, who kind of tormented me with a haunting vision of the apocalypse. What is this? Showing me this. Just stop. Just stop it already. I've seen enough. Almighty Arceus himself kind of showed up and started giving me holy guidance. That was interesting. By Arceus' beard, these things are demonic. The truest of that, my son. Who said that? Up here. Who are you? I am he for which your vision tolls. I am here to tell you that in order to find that which you seek, you must follow the path. Path? Path of what? The path that has been laid before you in the unknown vision. Follow it. You want me to watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians and look at pictures of cute puppies? What? what? No, no, you, you fool! <coughs> From, From deep space, space and longest time, his arms have shaped all that exists. From, From the, the beginning Alpha and the, the final Omega. His, his eyes will watch you over all. In, in truest true state, he is unfathomable, but in weakest form, he is almighty. He is the original one. And bear. So, is this gonna be a whole spiel, or are you gonna get to the point? It is Arceus! <coughs> it is Arceus, the Alpha. It is he who is the beginning of the path that will lead you to what you seek. So, you want me to make a video about Arceus? But, but what? what? No! no. Well, well, yes, yes but, but... Wait a minute. Are you Arceus? Uh... Then there was this jerk of a Pikachu who thundered bolted me, more than once. Something's not right here.
Oh, no. <laughs> Causing me to release this dark ride that had already been giving me trouble for a while now from this Pokeball the Unknown gave me. You may have me cursed, but you don't have me scared. If you want to get me, come and get me. Then it attacked me, but then this Cresselia showed up and saved me, which wasn't all bad. I don't wear any different shirt. Um, hi. You are John? Um, yeah? Then it was you who sought me, who desired one of my feathers. Yeah, I've been cursed by Darkrai, I know. You do? Of course I do, I'm a psychic type. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. But wait, if you knew I knew one of your feathers, why didn't you come earlier? You were not worthy then. But when you faced Darkrai, I saw that you were strong and courageous. Enough for one of my feathers. Oh, um, well thank you. There is no time for chit-chat. I was able to ward off Darkrai for now, but he will return. Oh great, so how do we stop him? We need the journal. Journal? Oh yeah, that thing! Yeah, I used it for a while, but then the pages ran blank. How could you forget the journal? When it became irrelevant to the plot. What? Nothing. Anyway, it's in my room. Good. It should be safe there. Why? The Alpha has touched it. Dark Ray is forbidden from entering there, just as he is forbidden from entering any other holy place. My bedroom is a holy place? Technically, yes, but don't get your hopes up. Uh, but then I got sucked into this weird alternate mirror dimension thing by a strange monster. Ugh, that, that sucked. sucked. The altar has been lots of dream makers. Yet you, did you think this mere boy can make a break breaky? No, but I sure as hell can get you to shut up. A darkness is coming. You will not stop it. Don't plan to. <sighs> but it all worked out in the end, I think. And then there was this Ghastly who I helped evolve into a Haunter even though it physically assaulted me. So, I hope you learned a thing or two about being scary. Oh yes, yes! And it's all thanks to you that I can finally go off and finally scare the masses! Whoa! What's going on? It seems that I've gained so much experience from this that I'm starting to evolve! scare some people. It seems so, but I will not allow my new appearance to outweigh the lessons I've learned today. Thank you, Mr. Mahogany. Oh, please, call me John. Yes, thank, thank you, John. John. Now, now, I must, must be off. off. The, the housewives to spook and trick or treat us to, to torment. <laughs> now that's the spirit. No pun intended. And for every person I scare, it will be to your credit. Oh, stop. You're gonna make me blush. <laughs> Anyhow, farewell, John. Perhaps someday, I may get to even scare you. And then my Axu kind of ran away because I caught a shiny Haxorus. Talk about jealousy, huh? <laughs> And that was odd, to say the least. B but now there's this stupid sentry running around. Yeah, I guess it is a lot of incidents, but I basically did just recap the whole season. Uh, never mind. Anyways, how much do you think that'll cost? 
Uh, well, it's just me, my mother, the ghost that lives in our closet, and our three cats. Six hundred dollars? Are you for real right now? Dude, for that much, I could just go to the Pokemart and buy enough Pokeballs to catch all these Pokemon myself. Hey, don't take that tone with me. You know what? Thank you, but no thank you. That's just way too expensive. I'll just have to figure this out for myself. I'll figure something out. I always do. I mean, I figured it out before. I get rid of Darkrai, the unknown, the Ghastly too. So I can just figure out how to get rid of any more Pokemon who show up. That just takes too much time and research. And time is just not something I have. Then I don't really have the resources for this kind of in-depth analysis. I see now why there are so many Pokemon professors. It's just so much ground to cover, from evolution to habitats to their origins. It does get kind of overwhelming when you try to take it all in at once. Which is why I guess most Pokemon professors only focus on one field. Which Pokemon professors' efforts are most important for our understanding of Pokemon? Well, personally, I think they're all equally important, but for the sake of this topic, why don't we rank them? I'm John Mahogany, and today, let's talk about Pokemon Professors. is Bugsy. Um, but isn't Bugsy a gym leader? Yeah, I know, jeez, I'm getting to that. While Bugsy, the walking bug Pokemon encyclopedia, is a gym leader, he is also the region's leading expert and an authority on bug-type Pokemon. His research has brought him to discovering the move Fury Cutter, the signature move of his Scyther. Whew, Kakui, look out! This guy actually discovered a move, and what have you done? Established a Pokemon League? <laughs> That's cute. And you need to consider how big of a deal this is. Not only is Bugsy a gym leader, which already takes so much time and dedication, but he's also a kid. Credit where credit is due. Next up, we have Professor Burnett. Now, most of you probably know her as Professor Man Meets Wife in Pokemon Sun and Moon, but actually, she used to be a much more obscure character. Burnett first appeared in 2012, a whole four years before Pokemon Sun and Moon, in Pokemon Dream Radar, where we learned she is researching the Interdream Zone, a place between dreams and reality. Years later, after acquiring a sweet tan and a fine hunk of a husband, we learned she's moved on to studying more than just the dimension of dreams, but other ones as well. Burnett's job is kind of important, as it seems there are a ton of Pokemon who come from other worlds, like the Creation Trio. 
So it only makes sense that someone take charge in learning about these Pokemon and the places they come from. We can especially commend her exploits as she now uses her interdimensional expertise to take over the Ultra Space research left over by Professor Moan after he went MIA. Talk about dedication. Dr. Fennel's a bit of an oddity, as not only does she research Pokemon Dreams, but she also researches Pokemon Trainers. Hailing from the Unova region, Fennel is acquainted with Burnett due to their mutual interest in Pokemon Dreams. However, Fennel took her interest a step beyond Burnett and developed a machine which allowed for the transport into the Dream World. On top of this, she also studies Pokemon Trainers. It isn't really explained what about Trainers Fennel studies, just that her Seeger invention allows her to collect data from Trainers save files. So we can only assume the data she gets from this and Pokemon Dreams gives her valuable insights into the workings of both trainers and their Pokemon. Which is pretty important as the two kind of go hand in hand. Oh Kukui, that wedding ring made a lot of internet snowflakes really mad. But damn it, you are so damn fine that it is impossible to be mad at you. Professor Kukui's field of study is Pokemon Moves, a fundamental in the Pokemon universe and he does it in style. Well, if, if you consider letting your Pokemon use their moves on you as some kind of weird fetish style, then yeah. However, his passions go beyond Pokemon moves, as his own ventures in the Kanto region inspired him to establish a Pokemon League right in his native Alola region. On top of that, Kukui is a very laid-back professor, taking everything in stride, giving the player advice, and being an all-around cool dude, almost as if he came straight from the islands. Kukui is a very dedicated professor, who not only cares about the field he works in, but also the trainers he comes across and is not afraid to do what he loves. Stay dedicated, Kukui. Now I know what you're thinking about this next run. Um, Chorus is like the main antagonist of Black and White 2. What's so special about him? Well, Chorus is a researcher too, and like Fennel, he studies trainers and their Pokemon. But more importantly, he studies what they can do together. Chorus studies the concept of Pokemon Strength, a rather broad topic which takes him all over the world, from Unova to studying Mega Evolution in Kalos or Z-Power in Alola. The ultimate goal to discover where a Pokemon's true strength lies. It was only when he witnessed the utter failure of Team Plasma's ambitions that he learned a Pokemon's true strength can only be drawn out by the bond between a Pokemon and its trainer, leading to his extended research in Kalos and Alola. However, his research is not yet complete. And by no means is Chorus a bad guy. He was only with Team Plasma so he could use their resources to back his studies, blatantly denouncing them the entire time. Team Plasma said this years ago. We should recognize the potential in Pokémon and liberate them from humankind. However, I disagree. So the fact that Chorus was willing to deceive an entire evil organization just to make his work a little bit easier speaks a lot about his dedication to his job. And although he looks like he's cosplaying Internet Explorer, Chorus is a pretty cool dude. <sighs> oh, Professor Elm, you lovable, underappreciated goofball. Despite his accomplishments, the Johto region's Pokémon Professor goes the least utilized. Portrayed as clumsy and scatterbrained, Professor Elm often gets overshadowed by Oak, even in his own debut game. However, this makes him no less important, as he discovered the Pokémon's ability to lay eggs and is the dignitary on Pokémon breeding, and his investment in his work often completely detaches him from reality. You could say Professor Elm is just a huge nerd who loves what he does, but that's what a Pokémon researcher should be. He is kind of the noob of the bunch, but his dedication shows that he can hold his own. South scene elegant. Up next, we have the Croissant King himself, Professor Augustine Sycamore, the leading man when it comes to mega evolution research. Because what else would he study? Professor Sycamore of the Kalos region studies his home's most enigmatic secret, mega evolution. When he was but a fledgling, he studied under Professor Rowan, which is probably where he learned his masterful work ethic when it comes to not being afraid to get in deep when doing his research. He even went as far as to train in the Tower of Mastery to learn about Mega Evolution. Unfortunately, he learned he did not have what it takes to master the skill. Despite this, he kept looking into the phenomenon, because a good researcher never gives up when they hit a wall. They study each and every brick until they find the one to push to top of the whole thing over. Up next, we have a three-way tie. Now let me explain. While they all study in a different field, what they research is among a very similar topic, and none of them could really be ranked above each other. 
Professor Cedric Juniper, Birch, and Samson Oak all engage in research which takes them deep into Pokemon habitats. Cedric Juniper, the father of Professor Arya Juniper, is the one to upgrade your Pokedex on your adventures through the Unova region. And although he is supposed to be retired, Cedric's passion for his research keeps him studying the distribution and biology of Pokemon, which is kind of neat to know as we basically have gods in our pockets, so we really should know how they work. Relating to distribution, it is Professor Birch who studies the habitats in which Pokemon are distributed. And although he still enlists a pair of children to venture out into the Hoenn region to aid in his research, you really gotta wonder why, as it seems Birch is completely capable of going off into the wilderness, unafraid to get his knees dirty, like a true scientist, to study the places and ways in which Pokemon live. And the places Pokemon live can be very important, as it can dramatically affect their biology. Of course, I'm talking about regional variants. And who better to study regional variants than Professor Samson Oak? Professor Samson Oak, not to be confused with his cousin Samuel Oak, is one of the Alolu region's Pokémon professors, specializing in the study of regional variants. This takes him all over the islands and gives him a special insight that some Pokémon professors may not get on the topic of habitat and biology. Sporting a sweet tan and his cousin's hospitality and wit, Samson Oak is a very inviting professor who is certainly up to snuff with the rest. Three dedicated researchers who want nothing more than discover more about our super-powered little partners. And for that, we thank you. Getting up there, let's commemorate our first female Pokémon professor, and the queen herself, Arya Juniper. Arya Juniper is the leading Pokémon professor of the Unova region, and although all the space, time, creation myth stuff of Gen 4 would have suited her field better, her study in the origins of Pokémon gives her a lot of insight in all kinds of Pokémon. She travels all over the Unova region and is very involved with its people and Pokémon in order to advance her study. And with her motherly compassion, she is able to make great leaps, however, she remains humble, thanking the player when she can and aiding in her research. Gotta hand it to Juniper! She's a cool lady who researches a cool subject. And on top of the list is... Uh, another tie. But that's only because there is no comparing these two professors. I mean, not only is one of them one of the most influential Pokémon professors in the world, his field of study is also one of the most important subject matters in all of Pokémon. While the other has been all over the world and has influenced many Pokémon trainers. Of course, I'm talking about Professor Oak and Professor Rowan. Professor Oak is probably the most famous of Pokémon professors, as he was the first many players met and got their starters from. His hospitable, easygoing attitude and kindly demeanor make him a favorite among many trainers, and his invention of the Pokédex and many advances in Pokémon research make him revered. Now, the reason Oak and Rowan might be tied is because I kinda have a bias towards the Sinnoh region's Pokémon professor. Personally, Professor Rowan was the first Pokémon professor I ever met, and if not for him, I would have not gotten that Piplup I still have to this day. I suppose I like the professor so much because I greatly identify with him. He is stern, but not mean in any sense. He just knows when some things must be taken seriously. He also has a raging sweet tooth, which shows he ain't all stone. Both of these Pokémon professors are very influential in their own rights, as they seem to know everybody, and everybody who knows them has nothing but respect and praise for these two. Oak studies the relationship between people and Pokémon, something which could not be more important. The bond between trainers and Pokémon is ever-present throughout the series in all of its forms of media, and that's probably why he gives you your first Pokémon, so that he can see how the influence of a trainer can make a Pokémon grow, and how the influence of a Pokémon can make a trainer grow. This could also be why he's been all over the world and has influenced many trainers and researchers. He mentored Professor Elm, gave Red and Blue their starter Pokémon, along with giving you the National Dex in Gen 4. He is good friends with Rowan, who also has his own share of praise. Professor Rowan's research has brought him to many places, such as Kanto, where he worked alongside Oak, and Kalos, where he mentored Professor Sycamore. Visually, he is very different from the other professors, being very stoic and business savvy with his suitcase and tie. But do you notice something else? Oh yeah, he's rocking the no lab coat look. And he's allowed to, as he's the senior most Pokémon professor. And because of this, he gets a lot of respect from his peers, respect so rightfully deserved. Considering how passionate enough about his research he is to stand up against Team Galactic and actually be actively involved during the Sinnoh Crisis. It was even Rowan who gave Cynthia her very first Pokémon, and approaches the player and their rival on Route 201 in Platinum to give them their first Pokémon after witnessing their eagerness to enter the tall grass. He's been everywhere, and has probably met everyone, influencing figures who everyone also knows by name, which is probably why he chose to give Cynthia, the player, and their rival Pokémon, because he knows potential when he sees it. Rowan and Oak are probably my two favorite Pokémon professors, simply for the work they've done in helping us understand Pokémon as a whole. And yeah, my liking of Rowan may be a bit biased, but that doesn't change the respect I have for him and Oak too. 
and all the other professors too, because their research is just as important and they deserve as much love and respect as the others because their job is mucking hard. Frankly, I would love to become a Pokemon researcher too. I mean, it's the only reason I'm here. It's what helped me get rid of my nightmares and solve all sorts of things. Doing all of this research requires time and resources that I don't have. I'm better off buying repels, or pokeballs, or maybe a big net. Either way, it's just... Just a sec. Mm, special delivery. Oh, uh -uh. Gah! Since the one new delivery guys just barge in! Ah! God dang unstable workforce! Oh. Whoa! Deja vu! But who the heck is sending me packages? Hmm... Dear Mr. Mahogany, I have recently come across your research in Pokemon Evolution, and I was quite intrigued, so much so that I looked into your other studies, and I was very impressed by the level of talent and passion you have revealed. However, I find that your work is not yet complete, especially when it comes to the legendary Pokemon. I believe that with the proper tools, you can accomplish this goal. That is why I would like to propose that you assist me in my own research as a field worker for my laboratories? But, Mr. Mahogany, you must know that Pokemon research is beyond sitting and reading. For this profession, you must be vigilant, ever curious, kind, and brave. But most of all, you must be willing to question everything around you everything you observe in order to uncover the truth you must be courageous. If you believe you can meet these requirements, and I know you can, then the job is yours. I have high hopes for you, Mr. Mahogany, and so I wish to entrust you with a special tool which helped me begin my own journey. With it, I hope you can prove my assumptions correct. From yours, Professor Rowan. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Mahogany.
Ha, 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 ha.